G'day Jeff Adventures, Terry King here, welcome to the channel. Why do you buy something? Typically you buy something to solve a problem, don't you? You stop by a takeaway shop, the problem is you're hungry. You got a hundred pairs of shoes in your closet? Maybe the problem is that you've got a low self-esteem and those shoes are filling that need. My problem is more of an annoyance than anything else and I'll show you exactly what I mean. Let's say we've pulled up for a lunch stop. So, I open up a drawer, I pull out some bickies. I open up a fridge, and I get out my drinks. Excellent. Put the fridge away. Now I want a plate. Unfortunately, that's in this drawer. So I gotta pick all this stuff up and pop it back over here. Grab my plate. And I can start prepping my food now. Let's say I forgot a knife. I've got to pull the bloody drawer out again and potentially move my stuff to dig out my knife. And every single time at lunch we do this tailgate dance. It's almost like the shell game or something. Everything's moving around. It's not a massive big deal, but it's just annoying. And it could be solved so much easier if we just had a little bit more real estate where we wouldn't have to shift things left to right and right to left all the time. Especially if you've got a crap memory like me and you forget things and you've got to shift things again to dig something out that you've forgotten. So the solution that I've chosen for my first world problem is one of these swing out shelf units from Cruiser Custom Camps. And these are just a couple of snapshots off their website. Now right from the get-go, before I even unpacked this thing, one thing that surprised me when I picked the package up from the gate was actually how heavy it was. I had a look at the shipping docket and it said 11 kilos, so I've got a scale here. I'm just going to chuck it on the scale and see what it actually comes in at. Wow, 13 kilos. That's a lot heavier than I expected. Now I'm not sure what comes off of the tailgate of the truck, so what I'll do is all of the bits that come off and that aren't used I'll weigh those at the end and actually determine what the net total weight gain is on the shelf unit. All right, let's unbox this thing and see what we got in there. All right, what do we got in here? Oh, sweet, a pair of stubby holders. Nice one. That's a good surprise. That'd be the leg that holds the table up from the one end. Some mounting hardware, some more mounting hardware, and it's actually labeled center panel fittings. That's cool. A bit, a Cruiser Custom Camps sticker, sweet, packing for center panel if needed, I'm sure that means something when I get into the fitting, ah, a little note, sorry for the delay, had a couple of little defects with suppliers, they had to be redone as I wouldn't send as they were, I've thrown in a couple stubby holders, hope you're happy with the product, if you could please post a few pics and I'll put them up on our website, thanks for your support, thanks for coming, cheers Glenn. That's a nice little note. Thank you, Glenn. Appreciate that, mate. And that'll be the business end of what we're talking about. Get rid of our box. Yoink. All right. There is a panel. There is another panel. And there is the table itself. That is where all the weight is. I'm not sure how thick that is, but it'd be eight or 10 mil anyway. That is a solid chunk of aluminium. I actually threw all of this back on the scale again without any of the packaging just to see what the actual weight of the components were and it came out to 9.7 kilos not 13 kilos so there's a bit of weight in the packaging and the pole of course now I've also got the instructions Glenn emailed me those a few days back I've got them printed out and let's go ahead and start fitting this little puppy first of all this is how slow my tailgate drops down and that's because I've got one of these little units fitted, which is basically provides some resistance as the tailgate folds down. The reason that I wanted to see how quickly this tailgate folded down, of course, is because that unit weighs 10 kilos. And I want to see whether that's actually going to be detrimental. I suspect it probably will. I suspect this will probably come slamming down much quicker. But hey, let's uh, fit this thing up and have a look anyway. So the first thing they say to do is just set the panel on here for fitment purposes. I've got this bit of plastic here that's protecting the car. Carpet, so I'm going to pull that off first. 
believe it or not, that's pretty weighty in itself. There's probably 500 grams in that. So we'll just keep that aside so that we can weigh it at the end. All right, here's panel number one that we are meant to set on here for fitting. Now the instructions say to line it up properly, which is good. And then they say to get a bit of tape and mark that line because you've got to cut one of these lids. Obviously the left hand side if your shelf is opening from the left, and I guess you'd have to cut the right hand side if your shelf's opening from the right. Now the instructions say that we want to run a bit of tape along here so that we know where to cut. So I'm just going to take my Nikko pen and mark each side of those cuts. Take this panel off and I'll get my tape and put it over the middle of those two marks. Just like so. And then our destructions say to fit that panel back, center it all, and then we're actually meant to screw it down. They suggest starting from the center, which makes a lot of sense to me, then screw the corners down, and then fill in all the gaps. That looks pretty bloody square. So let's screw that sucker down. Here's something I like to do before I start an installation is I just like to lay out the screws and any of the fittings in little piles of similar things. That just helps me sort of get my head around what I've got in front of me. And if you're missing anything, you can pick it up here before you're sort of halfway along the game. So these screws here are the ones we're going to use to fix our panel down. Let's grab a handful and go to it. Let's double check my panel once more for center. I am pretty happy with that. Okay, what the instructions don't say to do is to drill these out first. And I'm going to drill the first couple out anyway, because I don't want them to, those screws to walk on me and screw up my alignment. So just a small little hole, and I'll use a screwdriver for these first couple, just because I don't want to get a power drill in there and potentially screw things up. I don't want to over tighten those either, because it's just in plastic. Nice and centered. Sweet. Now we'll do our corners. And we'll do our other end in the corners. Again, it hasn't walked on me yet, which is great. Of course, I am now at the point of no return because this trim piece now has holes in it. So if you're looking at something that you want to undo at some point in the future, I suspect that this is not something that you'll be able to undo. Maybe if you bought a new panel, but certainly not if you keep it. That's the two center and the four corner. Now I'll just go around and do the rest of them. I won't record that. That's not going to make for very riveting video now, is it? I'm not seeding these with the drill. I'll seed them by hand just for starting them and running them in partially. Because I'm lazy. You can feel it when the, screwdriver, when the screwdriver hits that resistance point. Certainly don't want to over tighten past that. Take a step back and look at what we've got. Okay, time to read our destructions. Okay, the destructions say to fit this panel next in there quite nicely and then it says drill all ten holes two four six eight ten so the instructions now say to drill a four mil hole in each of these and then we take that panel off and drill it out to six for the nut serves I've actually ran two of those small screws in this panel just to keep it center as I'm drilling these four mil holes probably a bit of overkill but what the hell that's it. That's our four mil holes drilled. Instructions say pull this panel off now and drill each of these out to six mil. And there's ten of them. So one here. This is my new favorite tool, a nut cert gun. Nut cert screws onto the end like so, and then you basically use it as a, almost like a pop rivet and then that stays in your material, which is great. The nut cert that they give you in the kit is quite long, and it's actually too long for my nut cert gun, so I can't actually screw it in. So now I've got to modify that bit somehow and increase the length 
of that. Just a giant pain in the backside, man. Not the fault of the kit supplier, of course, but far out, you would have thought that these shafts would have been long enough to suit all different types of nutserts. Obviously not. So all I've got is a MIG welder. I'll try and MIG that in place. It's just like using a sledgehammer to drive a finishing nail, but that's all I've got, unfortunately. So we'll give her a crack. Okay, here's my fabricated nutsert tool. It's not the prettiest in the world, but it might just work. So let's thread it into the gun. Pull that collar up. And screw that on. Next, screw this one. And come on, nut cert. Look at that, the nut cert fits. Let's give it a crack. It worked. Sweet. The instructions say don't drill completely through the panel, but what I've found is these nut certs actually sit proud because they're hitting the back side of the panel. I've tried squishing it down slightly to be able to allow that to sit flush, and it doesn't. It actually pulls up before pinching the panel. So it must be sitting somewhere down here past this fold point. So the only way that I can see to get around that is actually drilling that the entire way through the panel. Yeah, that nut cert's now sitting more or less flush. Yep, that's the ticket. You got to go all the way through the panel in my experience. Maybe I'm doing something wrong, but I can't see a way around that. Works an absolute treat when you do that. Oh, I just discovered an error. I put a nut cert in there accidentally. That is where your pin actually goes. So I'm going to have to dig that nut cert out. It's a good thing that I can get it from the backside. All right, there's all our nut certs in place. Glad I got that knocked over. I was going to recommend to the supplier that they throw a couple of spare nut certs in for people like me that put it in places they don't belong. But you know what? He did. There were a couple of spare nut certs in there. So that was bloody awesome. That nut cert doesn't belong there. That's where the hinge pin goes. We'll get a pair of pliers and just snip the back of the arms off and then we'll pop that out of there and move on to the next stage now it's time to mark this panel for trimming and what i will do is i will cut pretty much down the center of the line that'll allow me to clear that edge when this whole panel is taken out so i've obviously got to unscrew this panel now to be able to get this guy out of here so that i can cut him now one option that you've got is at the moment this is held in with these little screws you can actually drill those out and put rib nuts in there and those are supplied in the kit. I think I'm probably going to do that because I'm actually a fan of the rib nuts over these screws. You know they're just sitting in that plastic and it, they could pull out. Not likely but they could. So I'm going to put the rib nuts in there. It's just a little bit more of a secure system in my mind. the instructions talk about this edge at the moment there is no capping piece or finishing piece I understand that the guys are working on it but that is not the case at the moment so you got to make the call on how you want to finish that particular edge for me it's so infrequent that I have these back panels open that I'm actually not going to worry about doing anything with that all right time to pull this panel off
following day, we're back into it again, installing these rib nuts. And the rib nut are down. This is such a cool tool. Get a close up on the action. sure why but the audio dropped out on the GoPro in this section. So here I'm fitting the hinge pin panel into the left hand pocket and that's held in with two 10 mil bolts. They provide you new bolts because they actually have to be a little bit longer to get into the threaded nut. Once that's completed I pop in the original Toyota tool kit. Not sure why I keep that because I never use the bloody thing. And then we move on to installing the panels. All of the rib nuts are all completed now and it's just a matter of buttoning the whole thing together. So now I'm going to fit this panel. And I've left these all loose so that I can shift this back and forth a little bit in case these don't line up. But just looking at them, they all look pretty good. I think we're in the home stretch here. All right, everybody started. Now, let's see if our pin fits. Yep, that fits. Over here. Yep, that fits. I've already screwed the bolt in there, made sure that fits. Here's a trick that I did. I was finding it difficult to fit that bolt in the hole and get it to line up in the threads. So I just took and I put a chamfer on the end of the bolt and that just allowed it to line up in there a little bit easier. So there's a hot tip. There's a little bit of weight in that now. That's cool. Lock it back down. Now I'm getting ready to fit the tabletop. And I've just noticed this here. And I don't know if the camera picks that up or not, but that is sitting proud of this portion of the panel. I'll pull this one off and I'll show you the reason for that. And I think I've got a fix. So our panel is now pulled off. And here's the reason that that is sitting proud. These little tabs here, all along the back edge, now because I'm at the point of no return with the panel anyway, with all of the holes that I've got in here from the nut certs, etc., there's no reason why I can't take my grinder and relieve those tabs a little bit. And when I do that, that'll allow that external panel to sit up flush. That's better. And I don't need to take that all the way down flush with that part of the panel because the nut certs actually sit a little bit proud. So that is pretty bloody good. Let's pop our panel back on and see if she's sitting flush. Now before final assembly, this is what you should have on your panel. Nut certs in place or just the holes if you're going to use the screws. This panel in place, that's where your table screws down to panel pops in there and stays in the locked position. Your table bolt goes through there and your locating pin goes through there. This is our next panel that pops in. That's all ready to go and that's obviously screwed down in place. That pops in like that and you can lock those two in. Next we got the main surround panel. Now I'll screw that in place with all those little stainless steel screws that were provided. And they look something like that. All right, tabletop fitting time. So that pops there like that, easy enough. Now in the kit, you get three washers. You get two stainless steel washers and a nylon washer. Now I thought that they went like that stainless nylon stainless and then popped in the hole and then your bolt goes through your pivot bolt goes through so I reached out to Glenn 
from Cruiser Custom Concepts just to check and that is not the way that they go. So I'm glad that I reached out to him and I'm glad, glad he got back to me. That nylon washer goes in between the tabletop and the bottom just to provide a little bit of spacing and help um, you know eliminate scratches etc as you swing it out. And then the other washer simply sits underneath the bolt like that. The third washer, not necessary. A nice spare washer for my kit. So let's install this puppy. There we pop our, pop our nylon washer down. Pop our tabletop over. We get our bolt with the stainless. Pop that in. Tighten her down. Now there is a locking compound on the threads of these bolts, so you don't actually have to put anything on it. But I threw a little bit extra Loctite on it, just because I've been running that bolt in and out a couple of times. Now I'm just going to center that washer up so it looks all nice and purty. See, if you didn't have OCD like me, you'd be done 10 minutes ago. Now we've got a locking pin. That pin goes here. I just got to wiggle it around a bit to get it in. That pin goes there when the table's at rest. So you can close her up like so. But when the table is open, you pull that pin out. Swing your table around. Just jiggle the table a bit to seat it. All right, we're not finished yet. Now. That sits there, obviously, and when you open and close your tailgate, that rubs up against this black area here on your tabletop. Now, what the instructions say is to pack a little bit of fuzzy stuff, fuzzy sticky stuff under here, just so that you don't get that chafing. In the kit, there was this packing material for the center panels if we needed them. I didn't actually need them, so I'm going to cut off bits and pieces of that. Stick it to the underside there, and that should get me out of poop. I'm glad I didn't actually have to use this stuff, so I've got it left over. Now that is sitting nice on top of those felt pads and when you close it you can see those felt pads running up against the tabletop. Beautiful. So now that I've got that done let's button this truck up, head out in the bush and give this table a real world trial and I'll also run you guys through what I believe are the pros and the cons of this particular unit. Come on board let's go for a drive. favorite picnic spots. Let's get our table out. That's it, she's deployed. Grab herself some crackers. Grab ourselves a bowl and a stubby holder. And a nice cold beer. And you see that? There was nothing obstructing me and getting in my way. And I wasn't playing the shell game when I was getting this stuff out. Awesome.
All right, before I get stuck into the pros and cons of this unit, let me just explain from the outset that I make no money off of my videos. Nothing, zilch, nada, sweet F.A. And you know what? That's okay with me. The reason that I do what I do is to share with you guys my experiences and maybe a little bit of my knowledge and maybe a little bit of entertainment but ultimately, I just like sharing with you guys so that I can help contribute to the broader community. And that's my motivation. So without further ado, let's get stuck into the pros and the cons of this shelf unit. And to kick us off, I'll start off with the cons. And there's not a lot of them. Number one is the cost. They're not cheap. This table set up here cost me 450 bucks, and that was without shipping. Whether that's expensive for you or not really depends on whether that provides the solution to the problem that you had. And for me, with this juggling shell game, it absolutely does solve that problem. So with 450 bucks, yeah, it's dear, but it did solve my problem, so I'm cool with that. You might not have the same problem that I have, or it might not be as a big of an issue for you, so maybe 450 bucks is too dear. You gotta make that call yourself, but know this walking into purchasing these tables. Con number two, and this was the biggest one for me, actually, that's the weight of this unit. 9.5 kilos it weighs after I pulled the stuff off of the tailgate, which for me was really only that bit of clear plastic. Why is that a big issue? Well, nine and a half kilos, I've got to obviously carry that weight and it's all over the back axle of the car. The other thing that I have is one of those soft tailgate opening latches that I installed in the truck here. And the table has basically rendered that thing useless because it weighs that much. And let me demonstrate exactly what I'm talking about. So I used to be able to just open this and it would very softly open. Now, this is what I've got. So she slams down pretty hard. That soft opening latch has been rendered completely useless with the weight of the table. Now, having said that, I've thought long and hard about how you pull some weight out of this thing. And you know what? I don't actually have an answer to that. This tabletop is the heaviest component of the whole thing and it needs to be that thick to be able to carry the weight. So unfortunately, I don't have a solution to that weight, but it is an issue. And if I had my choice, I'd like the thing to be a lot lighter. The next con is a little one for me, but it might be a bigger issue for you, and that is the lids, that finished edge on that carpeted lid is not being finished off yet. Now I understand that there's plans and development to have something to finish that edge off, but at the moment, just be aware that that is not the case. So you'll have that cut edge where you chopped it with your grinder. And the last con, it wasn't a con for me, but it might be for some people. You need a nut cert tool to be able to install this and you need to know how to use it. Now I have recently purchased one of those for a previous project. That was the antenna on the A-pillar of the car. There's a link down in the description, you can check that out. But that nuts or tool is awesome. I love that thing and I've never had one before. So for me, it was okay because I had one and I'm a real big advocate for the tool, but it's not something that the common backyard mechanic will have sitting in their toolbox. So just be aware of that. All right, so let's talk about some of the pros. First of all, top quality unit. But what actually do I mean by a top quality unit? First of all, the fasteners that are used are top shelf stuff. There's no secondhand rubbish there actually give you a little bit more of the fasteners than what you actually need so if you're a bonehead like me and you lose some you can still get the job done which is awesome the other thing i mean by quality is just the fit and finish it really is a beautifully finished unit and i cannot fault that finish at all the second pro with this unit is how quickly that it installs and then packs up again so i've got the thing deployed right now Let's hit a stopwatch on this. I'll put it away and we'll time how long it takes. All right, take him down. We pop out our leg, store him away, take the pin out, pull the tray in, locate the locking pin, and you're done. How long did that take me? 10, 15 seconds? That's pretty awesome. And the deployment of this thing is just as quick. Pull your pin out, spin the tray out, put in your locking pin, and pop in the leg. It couldn't get much simpler and quicker than that, could it? So top marks for that. Quick deployment and quick put away. The next pro I've got is the simplicity of the installation. You guys have seen that through the video. 
but it's really, really simple to put in. The only tool that you might not have on the shelf and that you need is a nutsert gun. Another pro is the instructions. They were fantastic. They were very, very detailed. There were lots of photos. You can't really go wrong. Another pro is the customer service. I reached out to Cruiser Custom Concepts when I was installing this because I had a question. Can't remember what it was. And the reply was instantaneous. So it was fantastic. They were right on the ball. And of course, at the beginning of the video, you saw that little note that was left in the package for me too. You know, those little things count. That was pretty cool. Of course, another pro for me, and the big one, is its functionality. It's actually fit for purpose, it's designed to do a job, and it does that job very well, and it's exactly what I was looking for. So that is an absolute positive, which in my situation, in my opinion, counteracts the $450 purchase price. Another pro for me, and it's probably more philosophical than anything else, and that is that this is manufactured locally by an Aussie company. They've designed it, they've built it, and they're selling it all here in Australia, which is just bloody awesome. I've got a lot of respect for an individual that sees a problem, finds a solution, but then has the balls to commercialize that. That is friggin' awesome. Absolute respect. It does actually comfort me that this is a pretty unique and a pretty niche product. If it was an awning, for example, you could bet your bottom dollars that the likes of Kings would be copying it and sourcing it overseas at a much cheaper price. And of course, the reason that companies like that are doing well is because there's a demand. We're buying the stuff. In this particular instance, I think this is too niche for somebody to come in and copy it and source it more cheaply out of another country. So there's a good chance that this is actually going to stay local, which is pretty cool. And that concludes this installation video along with the pros and the cons. Whether it's right for you or not, I hope that this video will allow you to make that determination on yourself before you splash out your hard-earned cash. Thanks for watching everybody. Hit that subscribe button if this is the sort of stuff you like to see. Share it with some friends so we can spread the knowledge in a broader community. Keep the shiny side up everybody. We'll see you on the next video. Have a good one. Bye now.